Good morning, everybody. How are y'all doing this morning? This is Kathy from Crowder's Mountain, and we are going to draw a pattern for a male and female cardinal barn quilt. And I really think you'll enjoy painting this one. It's very, very popular. Now, not my pattern. It's all over Pinterest, and um, you Google it, and it'll pop up. So, um, that's where I found it. And I drew it out. I figured out how to draw it, and a friend of mine helped me. And here it is. So, now I'm going to show you guys how to draw the pattern. But before we get started, uh, I just want to tell you that all the paints that I use, I'll show them at the end of the video. So I'm going to paint, I'm going to draw the pattern, show you how, and then I'll be painting it, but I'm going to fast forward through all that part so the video doesn't get too long. If you need help with taping and that kind of thing, I'm going to do another video that I'll title it something that you'll know what it is so you can see all the tips and techniques. I've got one number 50 but I've learned a few new tips and tricks since then so I'll show you all that. All my new stuff that I know. Okay let's get started. Um, can I see what else did I want to tell you? Oh, if, if you've got another pattern that you have in mind, like someone asked me to do uh, that Tree of Life, that somebody's asked me to do that big uh, hummingbird, the one that was my 200th barn quilt. So I'll be showing you how to do that one. And I've got a couple fall patterns that I want to do um, next. And then I'll get to these other ones, but... Just uh, leave me a comment if you have any that you want me to to show you how to make. It seems like uh, folks are really liking the ones that I do with the hummingbirds and the different kind of birds and uh, like those fish. S some of those things seems like uh, people like those types of patterns. So, but I'll do whatever you guys want me to do. All right, let's get started. Now, what I'm trying to do, all right, what I'm trying to do is to keep you guys in focus and in the middle of the screen. You won't believe this, but this is the fourth time I've drawn this pattern for this video. And every time I look back at it, there's parts of it that you can't see because I got out of camera angle. So I'm trying my best this time. We'll see what happens. All right. So this is a 24 by 24 piece of paper. Now I'm using the back side of graph paper. I, those, this is great to use. It honestly is wonderful. But I thought that the back side of it being blank would look more like your board when you go to draw your pattern on your board. So I thought that might be helpful. Okay, so I'm going to draw these lines with something I feel like you guys can see. And so I'm going to draw it with the red, and hopefully you can see my marks. So, first thing I want to say is look at your ruler before you start marking. You see this one has an eighth of an inch of plastic before that measurement starts. So you want to start measuring your pattern and your marks, your tick marks or whatever, using the start of the ruler, not not the start of the plastic. 
you want to use it starting the measurement. So find that zero and that mark right to the left of the zero. That's where your measurement starts. You'd be surprised at the folks in one of my classes, or a couple of my classes, I couldn't figure out why they were off so bad, and, and that's what it was. They were starting at the end of the plastic instead of the ruler itself. Okay, so we want, for this one, what we want is an inch border all the way around it, and on the inside of that, we want a half inch border. So what I'm going to do, I'm taking my ruler and I'm measuring one inch, just make it a tick mark, at one inch and one half inch. One inch and one half inch. And I'm going to flip it around. Staying inside that thing. One inch and one half. One inch and one half. So we're going all the way around. and one half. <laughs> one inch and one half. We're almost there. You see I'm, I'm marking it in every corner. One inch and a half. One inch and one half. Okay, now I am going to make my lines and I need to have something dark that you can see so let's make them I'm using flip chart markers or dry erase markers just for the video you'd never use that on your barn quilt um, what you want to do is use the heat erasable pens or uh, maybe a number three or four pencil, something really light. Um, you have to erase your marks. I always had to. I, those heat erasable pens are just wonderful to get rid of the grid lines and any other lines that you've made on your barn quilt before you paint it. So for just this video, I'm using these dry erase markers. So I'm going to draw, whoop, I need to get up on the inch mark. We're going to go to our inch marks. And then we're going to draw on our half inch marks. So now we've got that side of the border. Go to our inch again. That's why you have to go all the way around it. And our half inch. Well, we'll be done with the borders.
and it's up to you how you want to do it but I like I like painting my borders I like painting all the body of the barn quilt and then my borders and then the background but you do it your way it doesn't really matter not gonna make a difference in, in the outcome all right now here's the next thing we just drew an inch border and a half inch border right so we took an inch and a half off of this side and an inch and a half off of this side we had 24 inches to start with and we're going to subtract those three and we have 21 inches left for our barn quilt this particular barn quilt we need six blocks so six blocks across six blocks up so sometime you may hear it referred to as a 36 block quilt and or a 36 block quilt with a border you can make one border if you want to i'm making a border and a half so it's like a double border so that's the measurements i'm giving you so we need six blocks we had 21 inches left i divided six into 21 that gives me three and a half inch blocks that's what i need so i'm putting my ruler down here at the zero the starting of the measurements and i'm making a mark at three and a half i'm adding three and a half to that to get seven i'm adding three and a half to, to that to get ten and a half and then three and a half more makes 14. add three and a half and get 17 and a half and then three and a half more makes 21 and you're right on the end so it's every three and a half inches make a tick mark this one now and I'll call out those numbers again if you want to write them down but you really don't have to you can figure it out three and a half and seven ten and a half and fourteen seventeen and a half and twenty one And seven, ten and a half, and fourteen, seventeen and a half, and twenty one. We're getting ready to draw the grid and then the pattern. Now we've got all of our tick marks made and we're going to draw our pattern we're going to draw our grid for the pattern so we're going to end up with our six blocks Pull it down so I can reach it here. So I've got got everything in the world marked, so I'm trying to keep you in the in the camera this time. And I think I figured out the lighting. You know, it'll only take me a hundred videos to get this right. All right, now I'm turning it around this way. 
and we're going to draw the other set of lines and we're just connecting our tick marks together. Here's our grid. One step closer. All right, now I think you could see this red pretty good. Let's start drawing the cardinal. All right. Now, if you're a seasoned barn quilt person, you don't even need to hear me talking. You can just see me working. But I want to make sure that even someone who ran across this video and they've never done a barn quilt before will know how. So I'm taking it one block at a time, one row at a time. And you can make a line from here all the way up to here with one swoop, with one ruler. I know that, but like I said, I want to make sure folks who are, have just found this art can do it. So we're taking one block and one row. So our first block, we're going to start on the left. And you're going to draw the lines exactly like I do. We just need a diagonal line here and we don't have anything in these blocks but all the way to the right we have another line and it's going from the top down and that was the first row on the second row we need a line here And we need a line here. And I like to just get these lines in as, as close as I can get them when I'm drawing these patterns like this for you guys. All right. And then we don't have anything here. Or here but in this block we are in the second row over on the fifth block we need a line and we need another one here got it and you, you know you could take screenshots at any point and so you'll have like step-by-step -step pattern if you want to feel free to do that all right now we're back up on our third row back back to the left and our third row first block doesn't have anything but the second block has a line just like that and it also has a half line so we're just putting our um, our ruler in the opposite direction and we're just drawing a line down to meet that one see that all right, then our third block and our fourth block 
You see your grid is part of your pattern too, but I'm drawing over it so that you can see that. This is part of the bird. There you go. So we drew, we just covered this line here. That's part of your bird. All right, so the next, the next block is our fifth block on the third row here and we need to draw a line like that from the bottom to the top and also we need to have this line drawn that's part of your bird all right now let's go back to the fourth line. We're through with the first, second, and the third. <laughs> We're halfway home. All right, up on the fourth block, we don't have anything. The, I mean the fourth row, first block. On the second block, we're drawing part of the bird's chest, and that is actually your grid lines as well see that so all we did was just draw around that block all right the next block over the third block we need this line there all right, the next block, we don't have anything. This block is part of the male cardinal's chest, so we need to draw that part, and we're just... Now look, now, now see this, I'm coming down just a little bit off of that grid. You won't do that. I'm doing it just so that red will show up for you. All right, see, that's, that's the male cardinal's chest. Over here's the female cardinal's chest. Okay, now, we're up. I'm gonna pull it down so I can reach it. We are up on the fifth row, first block. And here's what I'm gonna do. We need to find the center point of this block and this block and this one and this one. So here's my easiest way to show you how to find the center. Now you can measure it off if you want to. I'm not going to. I am going to just make some lines. I'm making dotted lines so that you'll know that this is actually not a part of the pattern. And I'll show you why. This is the easiest way, to, I think, to show someone. Alright, now I'm making another one dotted line this way. Wish my hand wouldn't be in your way. Alright, see my dotted lines? I'm going to make the cardinal, the cardinal's beak. And I wanted to find the middle of that block. Because I need to make his beak, her beak. See that? And this is going to be her face. In the middle of that block. Now, you can measure it and find the center if you want to, but this is the easiest way, I think. So we're going to do that. Uh, let's see, wait a minute. That was the first block on the fifth line. That's the second block. 
the third block third block we need a line here and here all right now we're going to make our boxes our dotted lines again so that we can make the male cardinal's face and beak All right, oh, whoop, forgot that line. All right, so here is the male cardinal. He's facing the other way. So there's his face and his beak. And also, you're going to want a line here as part of the pattern because that's separated. So that, that's going to be black and that's going to be a honeycomb color for the beak. Alright, now they have faces. They need some heads, don't they? So we're almost finished. Let's go back up to the very top now. Not back up, but let's go up to the top. And we need a line that's going to line up with the top of that beak that way. And then that's the back of her head. You can't see that very well. That's the back of her head. All right. Then we don't have anything in three and four, but in five, this is the back of his head, and we're lining up with that beak for that top of his head. So, there you go. We have the male and the female cardinal on our pattern. So now let's draw the branches and the leaves and we'll be finished with this pattern. So for our branch, this is the way I like to do it. It just seems like it's easier than trying to measure and make sure we got it all right. I'm lining my ruler up Let's see. So I'm I'm gonna have three inches. No, I'm gonna have two inches at the top here. So over to the right, count up two, and at the top of two, the second row, the first block. That's probably a better way to say it. Over to the right, the second row at the very top, we're putting our ruler at the end, in the corner of that block, the end, the left. And we're just drawing a line out two inches. All right. Leaving our ruler in the same place, I'm moving it over so that I have three inches here. And I'm just drawing a line on that out to the end. And then I'm all I'm gonna do is just connect it. So I've got part of that branch here. And then for the center, I'm just going up to the top of the second block, the second row, three and four, block three and four right underneath this bird and I'm just placing my ruler there you can make your branch thicker or thinner 
but I'm just going from one end all the way to the other. See that? What is it, Willa? The cat jumped on my leg. All right, now over on the left, second block, I put my ruler on two and I I'm trying to draw this so you can see it. I'm coming out. There you go. And then I'm just moving it over so that I have three inches down here. Starting at the end of the bird's tail. See that? Now, we've got our branch. Can you see that line? All right. We've got the branch. Now, we need some little twigs sticking out because we're going to put some leaves on it. So, you can make your little twigs to look like anything you want to. But I put mine about an inch and a half. And then I'm going to, you can put it anywhere, kind of in the middle of that. And I'm going to do that over here. And I'm just trying to angle them a little bit, make them look like little branches coming off. And then this one, I want it to be a little bit longer. I'm going to put two leaves over here on the sides, but I'm going to put three here. So I'm, I'm going to make this about three inches long, so I'll have plenty of room. Try to get that together. All right. Now we have our little branches, and now let me show you those, how I do these leaves. Now, you can measure it out if you want to. I just don't see any reason why you can't do what I did, <laughs> and I made myself a little template. You see that little piece of... My ring's all messed up here. I read my palm while you at it. You see that little piece of plastic? I oh Willa, oh Willa, honey, that hurts. What is it, honey? Just give me a minute. One more minute. Okay. I got a demanding cat back here. I love you too, but you need to quit doing that, darling. Okay. Now, see, I took my little template. And all I'm doing is just outlining my template where I want my leaves to be. See that? And that's... I kind of let them touch right there. It's easier when you're painting if you do that. See? I'm letting them touch. That looks bad. All right, now I'm going to put two over here. Baby, don't jump on me now, okay? Don't jump, baby. It hurts. That leaf, and we don't want that. We don't want it touching this bird, but it can grow across that red line. All right. Ow! Now I'm bleeding. Get this done before his cat kills me. <laughs> what are you doing? I got the door open down here in the basement so she can go out and play. I think she wants a treat. Okay, let's get this done. All right, I'm going to put three leaves down here at the bottom. 
So there's one. Gonna put one here. And I'm gonna put one over here. The last step is we're just going to take our ruler. What? Well, put up the wrong thing. I want these leaves to be two different colors, like a light and a dark. So I'm just taking my ruler and I'm going from point to point. That's all I'm doing. Point to point. Now, you, you can tell this is going to be a little tricky when you're taping it up, but you can do it. If your tape's too wide, just cut it in half. Make it thin strips. It'll be a lot easier. There you go. Ta-da! I survived the fourth try. And a cat attack. I think it's time for a cup of coffee, Willa. All right. Y'all hold on. I'm going to paint it. And I'm going to speed it up. So that you don't have to watch it all being painted and taped. But you can see it. But it's just going to be in... Uh, not, not fast forward. Whatever you call it when you speed up the video. That's what it's going to be. And at the end, I'll show you the paint colors. Hang on. Here we go. I've got all the paint on there except for the background here and I'm going to take up take tape up these leaves with this little thin tape that I used a while ago and I'll make some little touch-ups here and there and I'll be finished but when I get it taped up I'm going to use the aerial view which is a very light blue for my background because birds fly in the sky and it's blue so that's my thinking i'll be back Okay, here we go. We've got it finished. And now let me show you the paint colors. Alright, for our red male cardinal, and Liz, you don't have to use these same colors. You, you choose, if you've got a bright red and a dark red, use that. But I used heirloom red and classic red. Now all my paints are Valspar or Bayer. Uh, now I have Glidden. I have some Glidden too. But it, they, I use semi gloss exterior only. That's all I use is semi gloss exterior. Now I do have some satin. If I couldn't get semi gloss and I really needed that color 
for a barn quilt that I was making, I would go ahead and get satin. All right, so then for the female cardinal, I have Navajo Light for this part and Canyon Dust for the breast. But now, you, you could use a light and a dark. If you've got a, a darker brown, put a little white in it to paint that. It's okay, but I like the way that looked. All right, then for, for their faces here, I've got Limousine Black. And for their little beaks, I've got Honeycomb Satin. And I have seen people put yellow there. And you can do that too. I just, I like the way that honeycomb looks. It's kind of a little golden touch to it. All right, now for our bark, I used natural bark. It's a brown color called natural bark. And for the leaves, I used Lazy Lizard and Rockwall Vine. That Rockwall Vine is the darker and Lazy Lizard is the lighter. And, but you, again, you can use one color of green and put a little dab of white in it. All right, and then I can't remember if this is on another part of the video or not, but I don't want to forget to show you this. If you're painting this, and like now, it's the fall. It's the getting close to the end of September, and we're into our fall. If you wanted to put fall leaves on there, get you a pretty orange and sort of orangey yellow. This is called pumpkin butter. And that's Inferno. But, you know, you could use whatever orange and yellows you like or gold, gold and orange or something. Uh, and just put you some fall leaves on there. Now, for the background, because birds fly in the sky, I used Aerial View, which is a very light blue. And you could use white, um, any color that you wanted. Now for the for the borders, I stuck with my colors that's inside my uh, quilt. I used that Canyon Dust for my half inch border and I used Heirloom Red for the outside. And I think that's all the colors. That's enough, wasn't it? You wouldn't think the male and female cardinal cardinal when you look at it you wouldn't think that it would take that many different colors but it does and I'll link these below in the video but just remember they're all Valspar or Bayer but I'll I'll double check and I hope you had a good time and I hope you subscribe to my channel for some more I've got some uh, some folks who want me to do specific barn quilts for them, uh, showing the pattern. So you may have seen the one that I did with the big hummingbird in the middle. Uh, it's my 200th barn quilt that I drew and painted. And someone has asked me to draw that one on my channel and I'll do that too. I've got a couple fall ones that I want to do before I get to that one, but that I put that one on the list, so it's coming. All right. Happy painting, everybody. Subscribe and ring the bell and have a good time. See y'all in the next video.